want to prove the script. <laughs> the script. I want to prove from your own Bible. Thank you. Yeah, that how you you Christians worship Lucifer. Yep. The morning star. The morning star. Yeah. Yep. The morning star. Not I'm Jesus. Omega, the morning as you star. said, we have. The Jesus we have and the Jesus you have are two different people. Go on. And I want to prove from your own Bible that the Jesus you have is actually Lucifer. Yep. The morning star. What does Lucifer mean? The light. The light. The, fall, the falling. The falling. Okay. Light. Go on. Isaiah. Okay. So. To start. Where are we going? So. Uh, uh, have you got? Have you got lots of verses? I, I want. Uh, then you can counter it. All right. Go on. So. So my my theory is basically based on the fact that. Their original, uh, uh, before it was written down, it was oral transmission before. That oral transmission was in the form of Gnosticism before it got written down. And the Gnostics believed in Jesus to be something uh, not, not quite divine as the way they put it, but more devilish. Yeah, so, and the original image of Jesus through Gnosticism is that uh, he was the Abraxas. And Abraxas is a serpent with a serpent head and serpent face. Yeah. Then the Roman Catholics came and changed that into the image that you have right now, which is actually Jezre Borgia. But my point uh, to say that Jesus, that the Christian worship is actually Lucifer, the morning star, is from the Bible itself. Now, if you go to the King James Version, which was the first uh, authorized translation of, of the Bible into English, which all Christians at the time used to follow, right? Now we have different translation, but at the time there was only before that, it was the Protestant Bible, which was the Geneva Bible. Then it was the authorized King James Bible. Bob can give you a whole history on it. I'm not going to. But on the King James Version, it says on Isaiah 14, 12, it says, O Lucifer, son of the morning, right? But the translators of the New International Version, which are Christians who are scholars of the highest dominance, decided they clocked the deception and decided to remove the name Lucifer and replace it with Morning Star, right? So we know Morning Star actually means Lucifer, right? In the New International Version, Morning Star is actually Lucifer in the King James Version. In Revelations 22, 16, this is Jesus speaking himself and confirms himself that he is that Morning Star. He says, on Revelation 22, 16, he says, I, Jesus, have sent my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the off, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Who's the bright morning star in the Bible? Lucifer. And Jesus here is saying, I am that bright morning star. Why I say that they worship because they were tricked into worshiping Lucifer. They don't know their own Bible probably They look at it at the surface level. They don't look at it at the hidden level, the hidden meaning, which is Gnosticism, which what they call is heretics. But actually Gnosticism was the original oral transmission of what the original Christians used to believe Can I reply in now? Before it was written down. Can I reply so now? Please, yeah. If you can make, uh, address the point where Jesus is saying okay. he's the morning star and Isaiah on King James says it's Lucifer is the morning star. Okay, so, so let, let us let us be clear. There are liturgies in Latin that call Jesus Lucifer. We Christians have no problem with this because Lucifer, Lucifer, uh, is can be a title as well as a proper name. One of the angels has this as a name. A proper name the one that fell the one that rebelled against God but it is one of the titles of God himself that is bestowed upon his angels because God bestows names upon his prophets upon his patriarchs even upon the Savior of the world he said and you shall call him Yeshua and Yeshua means Yahweh saves and in the Old Testament it says that Yahweh is our Savior so you can have titles of God that are bestowed upon those who are other than God now the title that Jesus is claiming for himself is the morning star but the name 
that he calls himself is Yeshua, yeah, Jesus. Yeshua. Now, the, Mr. Brown made a connection to Isaiah chapter 14. And like everyone of the Muslims who do dawah in the park, and like all of Mr. Brown's lovely arguments, they're based on an ignorance of the text. Because if he had taken the time simply to read chapter 14, he would have realized that chapter 14 is talking about the king of Babylon. Let me read the verse in context. When Yahweh has given you rest from your pain and turmoil and the hard service with which you were made to serve, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. The rest of the verses are directed to the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has ceased, how his insolence has ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers that struck down the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows, that ruled the nations in anger with unrelenting persecution. And it goes on, and it goes on, talking about the king of Babylon, and then it goes on to verse 12. I'll read from verse 11. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol, and the sound of your harps, maggots are the bed beneath you, and worms are your covering. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, O son of dawn. How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low. So, so chapter 14 is talking about the king of Babylon, who was the highest ruler, the most powerful of his time. He was the USA of his day. And the title, the bright morning star, was a demonstration of his elegance, his elevation, how great he was in all the earth. And this title, Christ is using of himself because Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, which incidentally was a title that the King of Babylon used to refer to himself, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That is why Christ is called the bright and morning star. So do we worship Jesus? Yes. Can we call Jesus the title Lucifer, which means bright and morning star? Yes, there is no problem for us in our religion. Go on. There is a problem because that title was given to, as you say, the fallen one. That fallen one, yeah. Is Babylon, in the Bible, there was many descriptions for the devil. They have many titles for him, Luz, uh, or Zelzebub, and all this area. But the Bible here distinctively called the fallen one, O Lucifer, son of the morning. But the translators of the New International Version changed that word, that name, into morning star. Yeah? But then Jesus is, as you said, you can call him Lucifer. Yeah? But Lucifer, as we know, is the devil. You wanna, you wanna change, you wanna change it into something else? That's your business, Bob. But originally, Lucifer is the devil, and you just admitted it. You can't call Jesus Lucifer. But there's, but look, throughout this whole Christian world, which Christian, which church in the whole world calls Jesus Lucifer? Apart Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> Two minutes. Right, so, Mr. Brown, can I reply? So, this is what I've demonstrated. Now, I just want to point out, guys, that the little troll here that we have to the right-hand side, we're now putting on camera. we put you on camera. Yeah. This troll here will run when challenged. He'll stand there and he'll shout continuously. But when I debate him, which I will after I finish with Mr. Brown, he will run away. So just wait your turn. No, we're going to put you on camera. We, we were, we were going to be polite to you, but you've been rude to us. So now you're going on camera and you No, we are, we are, we are, we are. We are going to put you on camera. Now, so now, just shut up. So, so now, now, are you appealing for manners after your rudeness just then? 
mannered. You're appealing for manners after your no, rudeness I want just you now. To be mannered because this guy you have no manners, you cannot lecture in manners, you are a rude troll. Now, allow me to reply. Allow shut up. Allow me to reply to Mr. Brown. So Mr. Brown ignored everything that I said. Who heard me read? Say something truthful. Isaiah 14. Say something truthful. Put your hand up if you heard me read Isaiah 14. You or shall I read it, it again? That's, not, that's English translation. Let me read it again. Wow. That's English translation. Because he wasn't, listen, I, I didn't interrupt I you. In Hebrew. Don't interrupt me. Could you hold that for a minute? I trust you. You're reading a translation in English. So Isaiah 14. Now notice his rudeness. Notice our little troll over here. Are you, are you a give, me, give me the Hebrew Islam word. What is it say? It's okay, Pastor. Right. So let me read Isaiah 14 again. And listen carefully for the key verse. Because I'm going to ask you to shout it after me. Are you listening, Mr. Brown? Reading from verse 3. Not taking verse 12 in isolation. Isaiah 14, did you catch that? Isaiah 14, verse 3. What does it say? When Yahweh has given you rest from your pain and turmoil and the hard service with which you were made to serve, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. Against who? The king of Babylon. Who are we talking about? The king of Babylon. So now let's listen yeah. to all 14 verses so you can hear it in context, Mr. Brown. Because it's not talking about the devil whose proper title in Hebrew is translated as Satan. And Satan means the adversary. Lucifer yeah. is a title that simply means bright and morning star. Yeah. And he asked, which church calls Jesus the bright and morning star? Yes, yes. The Roman Catholic Church calls him the bright and morning star. We have a mass in Latin in which we acclaim the great Lord Jesus Christ as Lucifer. We say it because we believe it and we believe it because Jesus said it but now let's listen to what Isaiah says about let's listen to what Isaiah says about the king of Babylon so notice his rudeness of our little troll so how the oppressor has ceased how his insolence has ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of rulers, the struck down the peoples in wrath with unceasing blows that ruled the nations in anger with unrelenting persecution. The whole earth is as, it, as at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses exult over you. The cedars as Lebanon saying, since you were laid low, no one comes to cut us down. Sheol beneath is stirred up to meet you when you come. It rouses the shades to greet you. All who were leaders of the earth, it raises from their thrones. All who were kings of the nations, all of them will speak and say to you, to you too have become as weak as we, you have become like us. Your pomp is brought down to Sheol and the sound of your harps. Maggots are the bed beneath you and worms are your covering. How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the dawn. How you are cut down to the ground. You who are laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly on the heights of Zaphon. I will ascend to the tops of the clouds. This is why, this is why Jesus calls himself the bright and morning star. Because the king of Babylon made himself the king of kings and the lord of lords. And so it is taking 
this Old Testament passage demonstrating the superiority of Jesus and it is applying it to Jesus in the book of Revelations. Mr. Brown, you simply haven't read your Bible, as always. Your reply? My reply is that you said that how it says how you have fallen. Did the king of Babylon fall from heaven? No. Like I said before, the, the, the Bible has two surfaces. You read the superficial surface, the, the top layer, and there's a hidden layer within the Bible. But and again, it says how you have fallen from heaven. Yeah. So that's why, that's why, that's why in Revelation Jesus is saying to you, He is that one that fell from heaven, the morning star, the one that disobeyed God's order in the originally in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And to further connect that. So Moses had a revelation of Jesus, John 3, 14, 16. As Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up and that everyone who believes may have eternal life. So wait, in the Garden of Eden, the devil tempted Adam and Eve, there was two trees. There was a tree of good and, of the knowledge of good and evil, and then there was a tree of life. So the serpent in the Garden of Eden tempted Adam and Eve to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge, right? And that's why the angel said, now you have become like us, gods. You know the, uh, between right and wrong. So in the second coming of that fallen one that you mentioned, the morning star, the bright morning star who fell from heaven came to test mankind again. And this time he did not test you for life. Yeah, he did not test you for knowledge of eternal knowledge. No, he tested you of life. And uh, there was, like I said, there was two gardens, there was two trees in the Garden of Eden. And the other tree was the tree of life. So that serpent that was in, uh, in heaven, tempting Adam and Eve, he came to earth to tempt mankind to give you everlasting life. It's the same serpent, like it says on Revelation. Um, sorry, on uh, the passage I just quoted, I, I think it was Revelation. It says, I am like, that yeah. bright morning star, which is Lucifer, the fallen one. Yeah, just because you don't understand it, that's your business. But the original oral tradition believed that, which was Gnosticism. You see as heretics, but that was the original teachings. Until it was written down in 18 something, which you believe partially because there are many books missing from it. Tell me. So, so let me let me just address what the brother is saying. So what we've got, can you just help me? Can you do, uh, pull up the, uh, tell me the passage for Exodus with the, the bronze serpent. So let, let's just address what the, uh, Mr. Brown is doing. So Mr. Brown uh, and the one in uh, Exodus, do you know it? Okay, fair enough. So, let us just address what Mr. Brown is saying. So, 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 in terms of, in t now the troll here wants to debate, but I'm going to debate this troll after I finish with Mr. Brown. And then he is going to run away. Watch what happens. So, Mr. Brown thinks that by simply repeating, oh, the brighter morning star, the brighter morning star, that somehow, by repeating that, he makes the argument. He did not address the fact that Isaiah chapter 14 clearly talks about the king of Babylon. So, what does Mr. Brown do? He comes up with another spurious argument, trying to connect the serpent that is talked about in Genesis that deceived Adam and Eve with the serpent that Moses was commanded to make in the book of Exodus in which God commands them to make a bronze snake so that those who look upon it will be healed because they are being bitten by snakes. These two things are completely different. The bronze snake that Moses was commanded to make in Exodus is not in any way connected to the snake in Genesis. 
Mr. Brown is simply seeing the word snake in one book, seeing the word snake in another book, and then going, well, they must be the same thing. Well, by this logic, every time that the Bible mentions the word king, it must be talking about the same king. And every time it mentions the word chariot, it must be talking about the same chariot. This kind of logic is completely nonsense. It's completely rubbish. It doesn't work. Furthermore, furthermore, he said that in Isaiah 14, that it talked about the man falling from heaven and that therefore he insisted that these words should be taken literally. I invite Mr. Brown to read the passage again because the passage is clearly using metaphors. Listen to the metaphors. It says that the whole earth is at rest and quiet. They break forth into singing. The cypresses exalt you. The cedars of Lebanon saying since you were laid low. Do you really believe the Bible is inviting you to believe that trees talk? No, it is using metaphors and it's using metaphors here when it says that the king of Babylon fell like the morning star. Mr. Brown is ignorant of the Bible because he's not reading the Bible. He's simply reading stupid Islamic websites that make silly arguments against Christianity that he never bothers to check for himself. I think I've answered every point. Oh, wait, I want to go back to John 14. No. He quoted John 3, 14 to 16. Let's just look at that. Or was it 14, 13 to 14? John 3. So in John chapter 3, 14 to 16, listen to these words. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Jesus is saying that he must be lifted up on the cross in the same way that the bronze serpent was lifted up in the desert and saved the people of Israel from destruction by the serpents. So you must believe in Christ crucified to be saved from death and have eternal life. Now, who can give eternal life but God? So Jesus is saying, I am God because he gives eternal life. You done, Mr. Brown? Okay. Pleasurable talking to you. Nice conversation. Just one thing. It's not even a discussion. Have you noticed um, in, in not so much your channel, but JC's channels, uh, I wouldn't mention Hatun because it's all full of hate in there. But there are a lot of uh, racism and bigotry going on within the commentary section. Yes. Have you noticed that? I have. Could you address those sort of racism? Yeah. Anyone, anyone who makes racist comments in Soko films or on my channel, I want you to be understand that I am not with you. I reject your racist commentary, I reject your racist statements. Christianity teaches that in Christ there is one humanity. That is all. And anyone who makes distinguishment based upon ethnicity, I condemn your opinions as being contrary to Christ, as being anti-Christ and as being unchristian. Okay. I want to give you a gift. Yep, there you go. We had a nice conversation. There's a book.
another one. I'm giving you a personal library, bro. I hope you're actually bothering to read them. I'm going to read it. I'll have you read any of the books I've given you? You've given me the one before. I have read a, a partial of that half of it. Yeah. Good. I, I will finish it. Great. When I finish it, I'll come back with questions. Fantastic. Cool. Look Thank after you. yourself, Mr. Brown. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Okay. Let, let, let's. If you want to listen to me, I'm going to move over there. If you want to watch the circus antics, you can stay here. Thanks, bro. This gentleman would like to have a debate. Okay, you would like to have a debate now. No, 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 no. no. You, you, you don't get that right anymore. No, tough, tough. You wanted to debate. Yeah, but I don't want to be with you. Tough, tough. What do you mean tough? I don't want to be with you. You were rude. You were rude. So, what, what was it you wanted to say about my religion? Are you, are you, is it on? Is it on? It's on. Great. So you, you want to, you've been heckling me for minutes. I don't want what to be videoed. Tough, it's tough, 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 tough. Okay. tough. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, but, but you said you wanted to debate me. I'll debate you, but you don't want camera. Tough. What do you mean tough? Tough. What do you mean tough? You've been shouting at me. I don't want to be videoed. For all morning. I don't want to be videoed. There's people, he's filming you. No, no, no. No, I don't want to be videoed. No. He's been harassing me, bro. Yeah, He's been harassing me. Debate, I don't want to debate, I don't want to be with you. So let's debate. I don't want to be with you. But you've been shouting at me for yeah, 20 minutes. Yes, but, minutes. Please, yes, but even when I walk away from you, you follow me. I don't want to be yes, with you. Yes, but when I walk away from you, you follow me. You followed me. I don't want to be with you. You followed me and you've I, been I'm shouting ready to at me. With you in a cool so way. so let, let, let's do that then. Okay, but I don't want to be with you. Tough. Well, ask them. So, please, what was, what was your question? All right. No, he's, uh, he's got the right to film you. I don't want to be with you. Tough, you, you are being filmed. Okay, I don't want to debate you. Oh, what okay. did I say he would do? Let us just address what Mr. Brown is saying. So, 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 in terms of... In t now, the troll here wants to debate. But I'm going to debate this troll after I finish with Mr. Brown. And then he is going to run away. This brother followed me around the park and every time I stopped, he stood there for 20 minutes shouting at me. When I moved away, he followed me again and he continued to shout at me. Who witnessed that? Yes. Put your hand up. Yes. There's my witnesses. And now he's complaining that despite the fact I moved away from him, that now I'm challenging him to a debate. He's whinging. Excuse me. So, the let's girls. debate. Go on. Respect the girls. First Come on. of all, respect the girls. Let's debate. Respect the girls. So, what is it you wanted respect, to say about the Bible? Respect the girls. What is it you wanted to and say I about the Bible? To he's, to he's filming you. 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 I don't want to. First of all, pressure to speak to him. Exactly. He's actually bullying. Uh, he, he followed me. He followed me. So, was it harassment when he did it to me? Was it harassment when he did it to me? Was it harassment when he did it to me? Was he harassment? Was he harassment when he did it to me? Do you see the double standards that the Islamists live by? If they do it to you, it's okay. If you do it to them, he has the right to film you. He has the right to film you. He has the right to film you. Right. So was it harassment when he did it to me? Was it harassment when he did it? And I have my witnesses. Who, who saw him do it? Here's my witness. There's my witness. Here's my witness. There's my witnesses. I've got witnesses. Now condemn him. Yeah, I've got my witnesses. Who saw him follow me? You see? And this, ladies and gentlemen, will be the justice that Christians have to live under in Sharia law.